Hi, Sabrina. Welcome to the Asian Women of Power podcast. You know what? You are the youngest guest on my show so far. I hope that you will set a high standard for the future guests. All right. So let's now talk about the most recent accomplishment in Taekwondo. That's your, your favorite subject, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So tell us, how did you get exposed to this sport? So um, basically, I got exposed to Taekwondo through um, this camp that I attended. Uh, uh, like a couple, like starting um, maybe like fifth, wait, no, like seventh grade, I think. Um, yeah, one of the years there was uh, my coach, he was teaching the students uh, at my camp. And um, he saw me and he was like, oh, like, because he saw me last year. And he was like, oh, I saw you last year. Do you remember me? And I was like, yes. And he's like, you should come and try my studio out. And at first I didn't really want to, but um, my counselor at the time was like, oh, I'll take you. It sounds like a, sounds like a fun time. Um, Cause she was into kickboxing. So, so she, she wanted to go and I was like, okay. So we went, um, me and her, we went to an open floor day, which is a day where they just go to like, it's not really like a training day. It's like where everybody goes to it, to like work out, but there's no class that day. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a really good time. And ever since then, uh, I've been doing Taekwondo. Hmm. Wow. So quickly share with us what Taekwondo is and what is the philosophy behind this sport? Um, so Taekwondo is basically a game where t- two opponents, uh, blue and uh, blue and red, um, go against each other. It's uh, two bodies, two points to the head, and three points to the. Oh, I'm sorry, two two points to the body and three points to the head. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get more points if it's a spinning kick or um, s- stuff like that. And uh, basically, um, each round is a minute and a half to two minutes long, and there's normally three rounds. And uh, whoever has the most points at the end wins. And so I'm not really sure what the like what the philosophy is. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Like you, you know judo, right? Do you know judo? judo? Have, yeah, yes. judo. So judo, I I think the philosophy is to defend yourself, right? Oh, okay. Um, and, and some other martial art is more of um you know, it's more aggressive, more uh, attacking rather than defend yourself. Oh. So I don't know. Yeah. Taekwondo is more like respect for for your elders. Like it's a very, um, like respect for your masters and uh, like the masters of the masters. So the people who have um, like, like, so if your master is a a fourth degree uh, black belt. And so the grandmasters are the people that are seventh degree black belts and and so there's a lot of respect towards them and there's also a lot of respect to your opponent and um yeah yeah so um all right so i'm giving you this scenario if some kids you know if if, let's say if you see um in school two kids one kid bully the other one right what would you do what do um, you do? i don't think i'd be violent towards that it's not the person who i am i'd probably go over there and see what was going on and mm-hmm. uh, talk talk or like if the, the person who was getting bullied i I'd, I'd you know say like hey like it's enough like you know come with me we'll be friends like you don't have to be with this person mm-hmm what if the uh, the bully tried to attack the other kid and then you get involved and they're going to attack you too? They're going to beat you up. Um, I defend myself. You can defend yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So basically the Taekwondo using the fist and the kick, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the time. Mm-hmm. So punching, punching is allowed, but um, it's used, I think now, nowadays in the modern style of fighting, it's getting used more often. I see punches using, like definitely within my, uh, my own team and also other like people who are winning uh, gold medals are, uh, are scoring more punches. So I'd say like it's about like a 80% kick, 20% punch kind of fight. Oh, 80% kick, 20% punch. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Did you do this? <laughs> Poke. <laughs> Poke the eyes. Yes or no? No, that's not allowed. <laughs> so only the fist, right? So yeah, you, only to the chest. Oh, only the chest. You never mm -hmm. punch them on the ear or the face, right? Nope. It's a it. Um, you could get a um, penalty. A, a point. Yeah, penalty. Hmm. Okay. So you have the you have been doing this sport for about four years. And you recently obtained a, the black belt. Congratulations. Thank you. So what did it take for you to get a black belt in four years' time? So um, I think I started fighting for this. I think this is my second year fighting as a black belt. I think this summer will be my third. And so the first year I, I was uh, doing Taekwondo, um, we would go to, like, to different scrimmages. I'd fight um, these people. And uh, my coach told me, and he said, look, like, I think you're ready to fight black belt, but um, I won't, since he's like, I won't be able to administer the test. So we need another, we need a different coach for that, but um, I'll give you black belt and you can fight black belts. So I think um, after a year, I began fighting black belt, but normally there'd be like a big, long um, test, like a strength test and a mental test and a written essay. And um, so just recently, maybe a couple months ago, I think, I officially got my, my black belt certification. Um, we did, we trained all day. I think we came in uh, maybe around like 10 o'clock and we weren't finished till, till uh, like a couple hours later, we were sparring, we were fighting each other and uh, we, we wrote an essay and we had to present to the class. Um, yeah. It was, it was a lot of hard work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. <clears throat> Will someone with a black belt level be able to defeat all the people at the lower levels, no matter what, what the other person's size is? Um, not necessarily. Uh, size plays a big part in, um, in Taekwondo. So, for example, if you have somebody who's, say, 200 pounds, and you have somebody who's 100 pounds, but the person that is 100 pounds is a black belt, and the 200 person pound uh, person is not, um, there's a weight advantage, like, that the, that the non-black belt has, and uh, sometimes it can be very overbearing, and, um, like, even a black belt could, could not defeat. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the level, <clears throat> the skill of the black belt is basically the skill to fight, right? To, to, to fight during a competition, right? It's not, uh, it does not mean that that person can defeat anybody, um, you know, with a lower level. Like, like you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned that the size matters, right? Yeah. So we are placed into into weight categories, and okay. um, but sometimes like there is also if you are more experienced than another person, it is and but you're much lighter. You also um, can still you can you still have a possibility of winning if you can use the right um, tactics. Mm -hmm. So you have attended many competitions from this sport, right? Mm -hmm. And as in life, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. That's, that's, that's life. So tell us the time that you felt scared and wanted to quit. How did you overcome that feeling and thought? Um, it was probably the first uh, nationals that I went to. Um, uh, last year, like the first, like the, I won, I won states and, um, I was going into nationals and, uh, I prepped like myself, you know, I was eating good. I, I, I made sure I was in my, the weight category that I was supposed to be in. Um, which is not always easy because you have to keep a certain weight and, uh, it's pretty hard. And, uh, we were in, uh, Detroit, I believe. Um, and uh, I, I fought my hardest, and um, and she beat me by by so many points. And I remember um, 
I, I was like so, I'm so upset. I was like, I put so much work in like, and hard dedication into something. And I just like completely like, like it wasn't even like a close fight. Like we, it was like, she beat me by a lot. And it was, it was a good fight too. But like, I remember feeling like so disappointed in myself. And um, I just remembered, I was like, I was like, oh my God, that was the worst. Like, I hope that never happens again. Um, yeah. So how did you get out of that, that, that mode, that negative talk and say, oh, you know, um, I cannot really, this person or whatever? It, it really took me a long time. I think just until, um, just until recently, um, I just came back from a competition um, from Paris and Israel. And I realized that like after that incident happened, I kept having more losses and I think like it brought a pattern in my brain like oh you're just gonna lose you're gonna lose and then one day um I lost again and I was like I was so close to to beating her and I was like that's it like just because I think I'm gonna lose I don't try as hard and so I was like I can't think like that anymore and um and so it like changed uh how I how I like think to myself like mentally when I'm when I'm preparing for a competition mm -hmm. So you were the one who recognized that or did somebody help you, you know, support you to, to change your mind, mindset at that time? Well, um, my parents, my, uh, specifically my dad, um, he was, he talked to me and he said, uh, you know, like, that's all fake. He's like, he's like, whatever you're thinking is not real because you're going like, he's like, you're, you're going like out of state nationally like you're fighting people from other countries he's like whatever you're saying like that you're not good enough is false because you're out here um competing and winning and so, you know like there's a price to pay sometimes you lose sometimes you win like it's a part of life and like for a while it was like like i just didn't want to hear it you know but um after i lost um in paris i was like i was like oh this is like a destructive way of thinking And um, I just, I was like, that's it. Like, I can't think like that anymore because it's doing me worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So he has been coaching you, give you guidance all along, right? But you just say, nope, 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 nope. Until, until the, the day or the time that you say, whatever I believe doesn't work. So I better change my mind, right? about um about myself yes that's great so what about the time that you felt like you are on top of the world when was that um it was probably uh, uh last year 2018 um when i just won states um in in california california state um i had beaten it was like i had beaten one of the coaches or i don't really i don't remember exactly who she was um but but she like I beat her it was it was an easy fight I'd say and then um the second girl that I I was going against was somebody who had made national team before like so that means that she was fighting for U.S. Oh, um wow. mm -hmm. yeah so she had made she had previously been on the national team and um and uh it was a really it was a really good fight you know we were like I was winning I was winning like The, the rounds and then the last second she scored and and so we were tied it was like it was like nine nine or seven seven or something like that and I was I was thinking to myself like oh my god like I'm so tired like I was like why did I let her score that last point on me like now I have to work more and I was <laughs> I was so tired and then finally um she I don't I don't even remember what the attack was but I think I kicked her and like I don't I think it was a headshot but I'm not exactly sure and uh, it scored and uh, I won. And so that means that um, since I won California State, um, there's an association called California Unified Taekwondo Association or um, CUDA for short. And that means that they would take me and, or like take whoever uh, made first place in, in the senior division, they would take them to Paris and Israel, right? And so, um, <clears throat> and so, um, my whole team was like, Sabrina, you made it. You're a member. Like, like, aren't you so excited? And I was like, so stunned. I was like, oh my God, like, I can't believe I did it. Like I, I went against a national team, like a, an ex national team member. And I like, and like, I only had like three years of, uh, of experience at the time. And I was like, this is insane. Like, 
it was like it was crazy it's a great right mm -hmm. yeah so what went through your mind at that time um, I was, first time compared to the time that you lose um it was uh it was good i was really proud of myself i was like wow all my hard work paid off like uh like it was meant to be like like i worked hard that was it <laughs> 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 it's um yeah it's it, it is important that you put that into your memory memory bank <coughs> right so in the future when you are in doubt about yourself you use that you trigger that memory mm -hmm. back, and then it will boost you up um to the next level <coughs> you can get some water if you like <clears throat> okay So what are the lessons you have learned from Taekwondo? Um, I learned that um, to like love yourself, you know, sometimes, hold on one second. <coughs> um, sometimes there's a lot of like, since Taekwondo is mostly like, a, it's a very male dominant sport. And so sometimes I feel like, wow, I'm the only girl here today. Like, wow, like I'm working with a guy again or I'm fighting a guy. And sometimes you, it's like a, a barrier, but um, like, I just have to get over it. You know, like, like I like to be different um, than everybody else. So I'm glad that I'm doing a sport that like only, only a few of my friends do. I think I have like one other friend out of my immediate group of friends who does Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. So the ratio for girls are very small, right? Like, mm -hmm. very small. maybe very, very small. No, I'd say it's probably a little bit more than 10% is for, for the, for the younger generation, like the kids, the younger kids right now, like under, um, still in elementary school, there's m many more girls, but, um, I think the older you get, the less girls there are. Mm -hmm. Like, um, for me, I'm the only, uh, oh, I'm the only senior girl now that's competing for my, for my tornado, uh, for my, uh, my studio. Mm -hmm. There's, I have another teammate who is, who is also a senior. But um, that's, a, that's a girl, but um, she doesn't train um, as much as I do. Hmm. Yeah, there's some, yeah, at that time, you know, <laughs> you're watching for your uh, uh, image, your beauty, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> because otherwise, you know, in, in these dojo, you're going to get sweat and, there's, yeah, you know, the hair is so messy, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the um, the concern. Yeah, it's funny because our uh, coach sometimes makes fun of us. Like, um, we'll be like tying your hair or um, you know fixing our shirts, and he's like, "Oh, come on, girls!" Like after he's like, "Come join us after you finish doing your makeup and your hair and, <laughs> and your dress." And um, yeah, it's it's good though because my studio doesn't have any mirrors. So, um, I don't oh, have, really, yeah, which is, it's hard sometimes because, uh, especially when we're doing like a certain technique and I don't, I can't see myself like, like in dance, it's good to have a mirror so you can see how you look. Mm -hmm. Um, but for, in our studio, we don't have a, a mirror, so I don't know how I look, which is cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do these lessons apply to you in life and as a young woman? Um, like the lessons of, uh, being like the only, the only girl or, um, the, the, the what you've learned from Taekwondo. It, it, it's, uh, taught me how to, to really get out of my comfort zone. Cause, um, I started, I started only like three and a half years ago. This uh, summer will be, um, the, my, in, in total four years. And so, um, when I first started, I wasn't like, I was like, oh, I'm so bad. Like, even like the, the small kids, um, one of my teammates, he's, I think he's turning uh, 12 this year. Um, he's super good. Like, the same time, like, he's super good. He always wins. Um, but I would always compare myself to him and be like, wow, like, he's so, like, he's like, and I was like shy. I was like, oh, no, like, God, people are going to laugh at me that my kicks aren't as good as, um, as the other, the other younger kids or whatever. But um, it really pushed me to like, get out of my friend zone and you know like be because I never was a shy child like growing up but it taught me how to be like more 
like willing to try anything, more willing to um, do things I've never tried before uh, and like make new friends. Because in Taekwondo, it's a very like, even though it's an individual sport, like it's only, it's one person against another person. Mm -hmm. It's still like a team sport because we train together and we learn together and we grow together. And uh, it's taught me how to be like a, a better person. Mm -hmm. So you are you are in twelfth grade right now, and you probably applied to several universities. Which mm -hmm. one did you apply, and why? Um, I applied to a couple uh, UCs. So I did um, UC Davis, UCLA, um, UC Berkeley, and uh, I think I'm pretty sure UC Santa Barbara. Um, and I applied to them. I applied to. I, I specifically wanted to go to UC Davis because um, they have a really good Taekwondo team mm -hmm. and uh, some of their team, like some of the members on the team had made uh, that the, the California Association, CUDA, mm -hmm. they made that before and, um, and they got to travel and I was like, oh, I want to be on that team um, so I get to, you know, follow and like still be able to do Taekwondo. And also, um, I wanted to be into, into, uh, in the medical field, and um, Davis has a good, uh, Davis has a good uh, medical, medical school. So what major are you looking for? To get um, I, I wanted to do uh, global disease and uh, the global disease. Global disease? Yeah, global disease. So you'd be studying like biology and uh, like, and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about that and say, hmm, would you, would you suspend the Taekwondo, you know, sport or, or interest when you are, when you are in college? And so if you get into Davis, you will, you most likely will continue it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if, if it doesn't work, if I don't end up getting into the college that I want, want to, um, my plan is to go to uh, Diablo Valley College, and then they have a system that, um, that tags with uh, UC Davis, um, the transfer system. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is the last question. Okay. I want you to think hard because you represent your generation, mm -hmm. okay? So if, if there is any Asian parents out there listening to this podcast, what would you want them to know about your generation? What do you want in life and what's important to you? Um, so basically, what what I want them to know about uh, our generation. Mm -hmm. uh, I I want to say that it's different from the, all the generations. I think every generation is different from the next generation, and it's just because of technology and, and how we are um, as like a society. And uh, I think definitely um, this generation now is different from the one before because of uh, cell phones and, and technology and the way we communicate with each other through different social medias and texting and calling like back in the day they didn't have they, they had to send letters you know and then like email became a thing and then now like they're texting and um and like soon we'll just be like telekine you know like I'll just be reading your mind and you already know what I've been saying you know and uh, yeah I just like you know kids will be kids like I feel like uh like our generation is still like we're still like like there's r some relations you know what I'm saying but it's just different like socially and how we just talk to each other it's a different like uh like slang to like they make different slang <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah so they yeah so you are different but what what do you want what do you want to what do you want to tell other parents out there to understand you know, your generation and be more compassion toward your generation? Mm, I'd say to, to be more patient. Um, 
I have some friends who their parents aren't that patient with. I feel um, sometimes it's uh, like, or like patience and openness or like for both sides, like the parent and the child, there needs to be like, there needs to be patience on both sides because it's not always the, the fault, the parent's fault or the child's fault, but it's sometimes it's like everybody just needs to like be mellow and talk to each other when something's wrong and um, stuff like that. <laughs> hmm. Do you think that um, your generation would would have compassion toward their parents? Would they understand what the parent is going through? I think it's hard to say for the whole, like as a whole for everybody. Mm -hmm. But um, I think in some cases it really depends on the person and how, how they uh, talk to each other. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry I mean, how, how the, uh, the child talk to the parents, right? How do they, yeah. how the family communicate with each other, right? Yeah, it's always based on the personality, you know, like some people, they're very open to everything and uh, communication. Mm -hmm. And other times they, there's uh, people who don't want to communicate at all. And they just want to like be, be in their own little square and like not talk to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the personality is very important to recognize it and learn how to communicate using that personality. You know, you understand how to communicate to that person with mm -hmm. that personality. Well, uh, I'm very pleased to see that you have, you have set a high standard for people at your age. Thank you. <laughs> and to be the guest on this podcast you are becoming the Asian woman of power. I have no doubt about that. Thank you for playing full out. And best of luck in college, Sabrina. Take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.